Hey Amit, why are you sleeping in the classroom? No ma'am, I am not sleeping. Yesterday, you taught us about the gravitational force of Earth. So what? That gravitational force of Earth is pulling my head down. <laughs> I love you. Shut up. I like you. Shut up. I miss you. Shut up. You are really pretty. Really? Shut up! अरे यार मैच वाला चैनल लगाओ नहीं लगाऊंगी देख लूंगा क्या देख लोगे यही चैनल जो तुम देख रही हो इफ आई नीड टू गेट अन अदर ब्राइन आई वुड लाइक टू गेट योर ब्राइन यू मीन दैट आई हैव द ब्रेन ऑफ ए जीनियस नो 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 आई वांट अ ब्राइन दैट हैज नेवर बीन यूज्ड बिफोर Hey, are you really hurt? I can't stop my cry. <laughs> One month after I die. <laughs> I want you to marry Larry. Larry, but why? Larry is your enemy. Yes, I know that. I have suffered all these years. So, let him suffer now. Hey, do you see that couple in front of us? How devoted they are. He kisses her every time they meet. Why don't you do that? I would also love to do like that. Really? Then what are you waiting for? But I don't know her well enough. <laughs> This time, if you fail an exam, don't call me daddy. Yes, dad. A few hours later. What about your result, son? I am sorry, Mr. Suresh. <laughs> hey dude, I am missing your funny questions. Let's have some fun. Ask me some funny questions. Okay then. What are the two things you can never have for a breakfast? Well, is it something non-veg? No, no. Lunch and dinner, dude. Ask me another question, dude. I will definitely answer. Aha, let's see. A girl fell off from a 50-foot ladder, but never got hurt. How? Impossible, dude. How can a girl never be hurted after falling from 50-foot ladder? Possible, dude. Because She fell off from the bottom step. Ha, next question, please. What two keys can never open any door? Are you kidding me? Is that exist? Yeah. The two keys are monkey and donkey. Dude, you did unchange at all. You have the same humor. You also did not change, dude. You have the same half brain. Hello, my dear sis. Ha, hello bro. Today is Rakhi na. Do you want any gift from me? No bro. I don't want any gift. Just bring 5 kilo tomatoes while returning home. Sorry, wrong number. What? Hello. Thank God, disconnected. 
5 kilo tomatoes too much <laughs> son why did you get such a low score in the exam dad the reason is absence were you absent on the day of exam no but the boy who sits next to me was absent Hey baby, where is my birthday gift? Can you see a red color car behind me? Wow. I bought a same color nail polish for you. <laughs> यार बता आई एम गोइंग टू टॉयलेट का क्या मतलब होता है मैं शौचालय जा रहा ऐसे कैसे जाएगा पहले इसका मतलब बता कर जा जिससे भी पूछता हूँ सबको शौचालय लग जाती है वेर डू यू लिव विथ माई पेरेंट्स सर वेर डू यू ऑल लिव टूगेदर और यू किडिंग मी नो सर Then answer me correctly. Yes, sir. Where is your house? Next to my neighbor's house. Don't make me angry. Okay, sir. Where is your neighbor's home? If I tell you, you won't believe. Please tell me. Next to my house. May I come in, ma'am? You are already inside, Scott. Oh, sorry, ma'am. Wait, what's the time now? Well, I don't have watch, ma'am. Shut up. Why are you late? Ma'am, because of the sign on the road. What type of sign? The sign that says school ahead, go slow. Doctor, will I be able to play guitar after this operation? Yes, of course. Wow, that's awesome. Because I did not play the guitar before. Hey, how was your exam? Not good. I left the paper blank. Oh, I also left the paper blank. Hey, Why did you do like that? Teacher will think that we have cheated in the exam. Sorry, I forgot. <laughs> Hi dude. Hey dude, how is your restaurant going? Not well dude. I came here two or three times. But it was locked. So I returned home. Oh, I think you must have came during lunch and dinner times. At that time, our restaurant remained closed, and all our workers go home for lunch. <laughs> well, Mr. Arun, your case is quite complicated. But why, doctor? You got a type of accident, which I left as optional during my studies. भैया मिट्टी का कटोरा कैसे दिया सौ के दस कुछ कम करो ना भैया प्लीज ठीक है अस्सी के आठ ले ले थैंक यू सो मच भैया दे दो सर काक्रोच के लिए पाउडर लोगे क्या हम काक्रोच को इतना लाल प्यार नहीं करते हैं कितना काम हुआ है उनके लिए पाउडर और मेकअप किट खरीदना इस तरह के सामान भी बाजार में आ रहे हैं अरे क्या हुआ कुछ नहीं सर नमस्कार
Well, Mr. Amat, I have gone through your resume. You are poor at your academics performance. But sir, our exam papers won't decide our talent. That's okay. According to your resume, you have done your PhD. That means you have a doctorate. No, no, sir. That means past high school with difficulties. But we need punctual person for this job. You are late for your interview. Sir, actually I am like a lion. Lion sleeps for 20 hours, sir. Amma, just imagine, you are on the 8th floor. It's set on fire. How will you escape? Well, sir, I will stop my imagination. Amar, why did you lost your previous job? Sir, I just made some corrections in the office. That's all they fired me. What was that correction? Sir, in that office every keyboard keys are not in alphabetical order, so I arranged them according to alphabetics. In this job we need someone. Who is responsible? I am the one you want, sir. How? In my last job. When anything went wrong. They said I was responsible. Where do you see yourself in five years? In your chair, sir. But asking better questions. You are in. Sorry. Get out. Okay. <laughs> Hey listen. Don't talk while eating. Hey did you see your plate? Just shut up. Ha, huh. now tell me, what you were trying to say. There was a cockroach in your plate. I was trying to say this, but you stopped me. Oh no. What is <laughs> I have the perfect son. Does he smoke? No, he does not. Does he drink whiskey? No, he does not. Does he ever come home late? No, he does not. I guess you really have the perfect son. How old is he? He is six months and four days old up to date. Oh no, about whom we are talking. <laughs> Hey Jesse, I am getting bored in this train journey. Can you please tell me a good joke? Okay. Do you know how to keep an idiot in suspense? No, I really don't know. What? Hello. I am waiting for your answer. <laughs> Dear, can you please help me in gardening? What? Do you think I am a gardener? Can you please help me fixing the door handle? What? Do you think I am a carpenter? Dear, this tap is not working. Can you please check once? What? Do you think I am a plumber? I am going to office. Bye bye. A few hours later. Everything has been fixed. Who made all these? Our neighbor, but he gave me two options. Either I should give him a kiss or a burger. I am sure. You must have given him a burger. What? Do you think I am McDonald's to give a burger?
Hey kid, how is your study going? Ha! Going good uncle. It's going and going, and gone away from me. Hey Ramesh, I remember your ant elephant jokes. Tell me if there are any new jokes like that. Sure Suresh, I have 5 funny questions for you. Okay ask me, I will answer. First question. Seeing the elephant crossing, the three ants started talking. First ant said, I am going to punch him in the nose. The second ant said, I am going to break his leg. But they did not attack the elephant. Why? The elephant ran away. No, wrong answer. Then, what is the correct answer? Because, the third ant said, leave him, because he is alone now. <laughs> okay, ask me the second question. An elephant was bathing in the swimming pool. How do you get that elephant out of the swimming pool? I don't know. It should be taken out only wet. Shall we move on to the next question? Yes, please. There are two elephants hiding in the refrigerator. Now you have to find the elephants. The condition is you have to find the elephants without opening the refrigerator. How can we find them without opening the refrigerator? <laughs> when you go near the fridge, you can hear the two elephants talking. You can easily spot that elephants by that sound. <laughs> My next question is Where can you find the elephant? Inside the fridge Wrong answer Then what is the correct answer? You can find the elephant only where you tied it My last question An ant and elephant were standing in a queue Suddenly an elephant turned and said something to the ant Everyone was shocked by hearing that. What would the elephant said to the ant? I don't know. Please tell me the answer. The elephant said, don't push me. <laughs> Dude, I really enjoyed your funny questions. Okay, see you soon, again. Really I was not drunk last night. Oh, then you remember everything. Yes of course. You were watching the TV all night. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. But the TV was switched off. Do you really love me? Of course, like Shah Jahan. It means you are also going to build Taj Mahal for me. Yes, I already bought a flat for you. And it is your turn. <laughs> Students, keep silence. I will ask some questions regarding tenses. Nikhil. Yes, ma'am. Stand up. I am beautiful. Which tense is it? Obviously it is past tense, ma'am. <laughs> hey, darling. Had your lunch. Hey, darling. Had your lunch. I am asking you. I am asking you. You copying me. You copying me. Okay. Let's go to shopping. Ha huh, darling, I had my lunch. <laughs> Bro.
Bro I am getting bored. Let's go out and have some fun. I am also getting bored. First let us decide where to go. Let's go to a movie. Movies are boring nowadays. Let's go to the beach. No no. I am afraid of water. So let's go to an amusement park. You're stupid. Do you think we are couple to go to an amusement park? Shut up. I am not coming. You go single. Bro, sorry sorry. Let's go to the all places and eat whatever we want. Sure. Then I will drive the car. You are younger than me. You should not drive the car. But I can drive better than you. I am not going to give you the keys. Okay, I will go by public transport. <laughs> Don't get irritated. Drive carefully. Let's move. I am still afraid of your driving. You just keep silent. What are you waiting for? Start the car. Actually, I am looking for the start button. It is your left hand side. Okay, thank you, bro. Bro, I am getting sleep. Put on the music player. Sure, bro. Bro watch out, there is traffic police in front of us. You don't have license and I forgot my license. Stop the car, we are approaching him. Bro actually, where are the brakes? Under your feet stupid, shut. She got us. Do you want invitation to get out of the car? No ma'am, sorry. Come on, come out. Show me your license. Ma'am, actually I don't have license. Pay the fine of 1000 rupees. Show me the insurance papers. Ma'am they are at home. Pay another fine of 500 rupees. You drove the car without seat belt. No ma'am, I wore the seat belt. If you have doubt, ask my brother. No ma'am. My brother did not wear seat belt. Pay another fine of 500 rupees. Why did you lie with the police? I already warned you to stop the car. But you did not hear me. So what? I lost 2000 rupees because of you. Stupid. Fool. You are the only stupid. First let's go and eat something. Yeah. You are right. I am also feeling hungry. Then what are you waiting for? Get down. Bro it seems like a big restaurant. We can't afford much money. Let's go to another restaurant. Shut up. This is good. Let get seated. Bearer. Take the order. Yes sir. Order please. We need chicken manchuria, mutton fry, roti, chicken biryani, fish fry, thumb soup, ice creams. Sure sir. Bro why did you order that much? Is anyone going to join us? No bro. They are only for us. Yes, our order arrived. Behave yourself bro. Ha huh, very yummy bro. Bearer bring the bill. Here is your bill sir. How much is it bro? It is 2000 rupees bro. 
very cheap. What happened bro? Bro, I paid my 2000 rupees to the police is fine. Now we don't have money. Then what to do now? We will escape nicely. Okay then. There you go, we will pay the money. Yes sir. Bro, let's go, fast. Sure. At last we escaped bro. Yes. We are too intelligent bro. If we were caught, what would be the consequences? Simple, washing dishes. Okay, now let's move to the beach. From here, I will drive the car. Okay, I love driving my car. Stupid, this is not your car. This is my car. Dad bought this car for me. But, he bought this on my birthday. So it is my birthday gift. Shut up. You shut up. Drive carefully or else I will drive the car. Bro the beach is very beautiful. Isn't it? Yeah bro, but only thing is, I am afraid of the water. I am going to surf. Just see and enjoy. Hey bro. You coward. Come on if you are a male. Come and surf with me. Wait I am coming. Hey, I was just joking. You don't know surfing. Stay there only. Okay then. Bro it's getting dark. Move to our home. Okay. What happened bro? Tire punctured. Get down. We should not have come out. This is because of you only. I got both of you. My dinner for today will be satisfied. Bro, did you hear anything? No. Oh you did not hear me. Bro I also heard it. Something is hunting here. Let's move immediately. Let us listen some moral stories for some time. Once upon a time, there was a Greek king, Midas. He was very rich and had lots of gold. He had a daughter, who loved a lot. One day, Midas found an angel in need of help. He helped her and in return she agreed to grant a wish. Midas wished that everything he touched would turn into gold. His wish was granted. On his way home, in excitement he hugged his daughter, who turned into gold. Midas was devastated and he had learned his lesson. Upon learning his lesson, Midas asked the angel to take his wish away. Moral here is, greed is not good for you. Be content and satisfied to lead a happy and fulfilling life. Number 2. The Tortoise and the Hare This is an extremely popular story about a hare and a tortoise. The hare is an animal that is known to move quickly, while a tortoise is one to move slowly. One day the hare challenged the tortoise to a race simply to prove that he was the best. The tortoise agreed. Once the race began, the hare was easily able to get a head start. Upon realizing that tortoise is for behind, the overconfident hare decided to take a nap. Meanwhile the tortoise, who was extremely determined and dedicated to the race, was slowly nearing the finish line. The tortoise won the race while the hare napped. Mostly importantly he did it with humility and without arrogance. The moral of the story is, when you work hard and persevere, you can achieve your goals. Slow and steady wins the race. Number 3. The Ant and the Grasshopper. The Ant and the Grasshopper were best friends, with different personalities. The Grasshopper would spend his days, sleeping or playing his guitar. While the Ant would collect food, and build his ant hill. Every now and then, the Grasshopper would tell the Ant, to take a break. However, the ant would refuse, and continue to complete, his work. Soon winter came, making the days and nights cold. One day the colony of ants were busy, trying to dry some grains of corn. 
The grasshopper who was extremely weak, and hungry came up to the ants and asked. Can you please give me a piece of corn? The ant replied, we worked hard, for this corn, all summer, while you relaxed, why should we give it to you? The grasshopper was so busy, singing and sleeping that he didn't have enough food to last winter. The grasshopper realized his mistake. Moral of the story is, make use of opportunity, while you have it. Number 4. The Monkey and the Crocodile. This is a story from Panchatantra. A monkey lived on a berry tree on the river bank. Once he saw a crocodile under the tree who looked hungry and tired. He gave the crocodile some berries, the crocodile thanked the monkey and became one of his friends. The monkey would give berries to the crocodile every day. One day the monkey even gave the crocodile extra berries to take to his wife. His wife enjoyed the berries but told her husband, that she wanted to eat the monkey's heart. She was a wicked and cunning woman. The crocodile was upset, but he decided that he needed to make his wife happy. On the next day, the crocodile went to the monkey and said that his wife had called him for dinner. The crocodile carried the monkey on his back across the river. He told this monkey his wife's plan. The monkey had to think quickly if he wanted to save himself. He told the crocodile that, he left his heart on the berry tree, and that they needed to return. On reaching, the monkey climbed the tree and spoke. I'm not getting down, you betrayed my trust and that means our friendship is over. Moral of the story. Never betray someone who trusts you and choose your friends wisely. Number 5. The Foolish Thief. One day, a wealthy man came to Akbar's court in hope to get help from Birbal. The man suspected that one of his servants had stolen from him. The clever Birbal thought of a plan and gave all the merchant's servants sticks of the same length. He also told them that the stick will grow three inches by tomorrow if they were the thief. The next day, all the servants gathered around Birbal. He noticed that one of the servant's sticks was three inches shorter than the others. Burble immediately understood who the thief was. The thief had cut the stick shorter by three inches as he thought it would grow three inches. Because of this his guilt was proven. Moral of the story. The truth will always come out one way or another, so better to be truthful from the beginning. Next one. The Brahmin's dream. A poor Brahmin lived in a village all alone. He had no friends or relatives. He was known for being stingy and he used to beg for a living. The food he got as alms were kept in an earthen pot which was hung beside his bed. This allowed him to easily access the food when he got hungry. On one day, he got so much rice gruel that even after completing his meal, there was so much leftover in his pot. That night, he dreamt that his pot was overflowing with rice gruel and that if a famine came, he could sell the food and earn silver from it. This silver could then be used to buy a pair of goats who would soon have kids and create a herd. This herd in turn could be traded for buffaloes who would give milk from which he could make dairy products. These products could be sold in the market for more money. This money would help him get married to a rich woman and together they would have a son who he could scold and love in equal measure. He dreamt that when his son wouldn't listen, he would run after him with a stick. Wrapped up in his dream the Brahmin picked up the stick near his bed and started hitting the air with the stick. While flailing about, he hit the earthen pot with the stick, the pot broke and all the contents spilled over him. The Brahmin woke up with a start only to realize that everything was a dream. Moral of the story. One should not build castles in the air. Next one. The Blue Jackal story. Once there was an adventurous jackal, who frequently strayed into the village looking for food. The village was filled with dogs that scared the jackal. Although he was scared of the dogs, the jackal loved food and traveled to the city again and again. One day, as he was going to enter a house, he heard barking. He was shocked to find a gang of dogs running towards the house. They looked violent and caused the jackal to panic. He ran and tumbled into a tub of blue dye. The dogs couldn't see him and they ran another way. Now the jackal was completely blue from head to toe. He appeared very different from any other animal. The jackal was pleased as no one would be able to recognize him and he could easily fool anyone in the jungle. Just like he had thought, everyone in the jungle was surprised to see such an unusual animal. The small animals, the lion and the tiger all asked who he was and who had sent him. I have been sent by God himself to look after you. I will now be the king of the jungle, the jackal said. The lion protested saying he had always been the king of the forest. From now, that must change and all of you must serve me, the jackal happily said. 
Some animals like the tiger protested and asked what would happen if they didn't obey him. He replied saying God would destroy the entire jungle if they didn't. Scared for their lives and their jungle, the animals asked the blue jackal what he would like them to do. Bring me lots of food, said the blue jackal promptly. The animals quickly scurried and returned with lots of food for the jackal. He had so much food that he gave his leftovers to the other animals and told them that they had to serve him fresh food every day. He even threw out the pack of jackals from the forest because he knew that they could identify him someday. The blue jackal was very happy with himself for fooling the entire forest and was happy to be away from the city dogs. But one day the banned pack of jackals was walking around the forest and howling loudly. The blue jackal began howling out of habit too. Because of this mistake, the other animals quickly identified him as a jackal and destroyed him. Moral of the story. Be true to yourself and don't pretend to be someone you are not. Next, the boy who cried wolf. Once, there was a boy who became bored when he watched over the village sheep grazing on the hillside. To entertain himself, he sang out, Wolf! Wolf! The wolf is chasing the sheep. When the villagers heard the cry, they came running up the hill to drive the wolf away. But, when they arrived, they saw no wolf. The boy was amused when seeing their angry faces. Don't scream wolf, boy, warned the villagers, when there is no wolf. They angrily went back down the hill. Later, the shepherd boy cried out once again, wolf, wolf, the wolf is chasing the sheep. To his amusement, he looked on as the villagers came running up the hill to scare the wolf away. As they saw there was no wolf, they said strictly, save your frightened cry for when there really is a wolf. Don't cry, wolf, when there is no wolf. But the boy grinned at their words while they walked grumbling down the hill once more. Later, the boy saw a real wolf sneaking around his flock. Alarmed, he jumped on his feet and cried out as loud as he could, Wolf! Wolf! But the villagers thought he was fooling them again, and so they didn't come to help. At sunset, the villagers went looking for the boy who hadn't returned with their sheep. When they went up the hill, they found him weeping. There really was a wolf here. The flock is gone. I cried out, Wolf, but you didn't come, he wailed. An old man went to comfort the boy. As he put his arm around him, he said, nobody believes a liar, even when he is telling the truth. The Proud Rose Once upon a time, in a desert far away, there was a rose who was so proud of her beautiful looks. Her only complaint was growing next to an ugly cactus. Every day, the beautiful rose would insult and mock the cactus on his looks, all while the cactus remained quiet. All the other plants nearby tried to make the rose see sense, but she was too swayed by her own looks. One scorching summer, the desert became dry, and there was no water left for the plants. The rose quickly began to wilt. Her beautiful petals dried up, losing their lush color. Looking to the cactus, she saw a sparrow dip his beak into the cactus to drink some water. Though ashamed, the rose asked the cactus if she could have some water. The kind cactus readily agreed, helping them both through the tough summer, as friends. Moral of the story. Never judge anyone by the way they look. Next, the farmer and the well. One day, a farmer was looking for a water source for his farm, when he bought a well from his neighbor. The neighbor, however, was cunning. The next day, as the farmer came to draw water from his well, the neighbor refused to let him take any water. When the farmer asked why, the neighbor replied, I sold you the well, not the water, and walked away. Distraught, the farmer went to the emperor to ask for justice. He explained what had happened. The emperor called on Burble, one of his nine, and wisest, courtiers. Burble proceeded to question the neighbor, why don't you let the farmer take water from the well? You did sell the well to the farmer. The neighbor replied, Burble, I did sell the well to the farmer but not the water within it. He has no right to draw water from the well. Burble said, look, since you sold the well, you have no right to keep the water in the farmer's well. Either you pay rent to the farmer, or take it out immediately. Realizing that his scheme had failed, the neighbor apologized and went home. Moral of the story. Cheating will not get you anything. If you cheat, you'll pay soon enough. Next, elephant and friends. A lone elephant walked through the forest, looking for friends. She soon saw a monkey and proceeded to ask, can we be friends, monkey? The monkey quickly replied, you are big and can't swing on trees like I do, so I cannot be your friend. 
Defeated, the elephant continued to search when it stumbled across a rabbit. She proceeded to ask him, can we be friends, rabbit? The rabbit looked at the elephant and replied, you are too big to fit inside my burrow. You cannot be my friend. Then, the elephant continued until she met a frog. She asked, will you be my friend, frog? The frog replied, you are too big and heavy, you cannot jump like me. I am sorry, but you can't be my friend. The elephant continued to ask the animals she met on her way, but always received the same reply. The following day, the elephant saw all the forest animals run in fear. She stopped a bear to ask what was happening and was told the tiger was attacking all the small animals. The elephant wanted to save the other animals, so she went to the tiger and said, Please, sir, leave my friends alone. Do not eat them. The tiger didn't listen. He merely told the elephant to mind her own business. Seeing no other way, the elephant kicked the tiger and scared him away. Upon hearing of the brave tale, the other animals agreed, you are just the right size to be our friend. Moral of the story, friends come in every shape and size. Next one is, the needle tree. Once, there were two brothers who lived at the forest's edge. The oldest brother was always unkind to his younger brother. The older brother took all the food and snatched all the good clothes. The oldest brother used to go into the forest in search of firewood to sell in the market. As he walked through the forest, he chopped off the branches of every tree, until he came upon a magical tree. The tree stopped him before he chopped its branches and said, Oh, kind sir, please spare my branches. If you spare me, I will provide you with golden apples. The oldest brother agreed but was feeling disappointed with how many apples the tree gave him. Overcome by greed, the brother threatened to cut the entire tree if it didn't provide him with more apples. But, instead of giving more apples, the tree showered him with hundreds of tiny needles. The brother fell to the ground, crying in pain as the sun began to set. Soon, the younger brother became worried and went to search for his older brother. He searched until he found him at the trunk of the tree, lying in pain with hundreds of needles on his body. He rushed to him and started to painstakingly remove each needle with love. Once the needles were out, the oldest brother apologized for treating his younger brother so badly. The magical tree saw the change in the older brother's heart and gifted them with all the golden apples they could need. Moral of the story, it's important to be kind, as it will always be rewarded. Next one, the bundle of sticks. Once upon a time, there was an old man who lived in a village with his three sons. Although his three sons were hard workers, they quarreled all the time. The old man tried to unite them but failed. Months passed by, and the old man became sick. He asked his sons to remain united, but they failed to listen to him. At that moment, the old man decided to teach them a lesson, to forget their differences and come together in unity. The old man summoned his sons, then proceeded to tell them, I will provide you with a bundle of sticks. Separate each stick, and then break each into two. The one who finishes first will be rewarded more than the others. And so, the sons agreed. The old man provided them with a bundle of ten sticks each, and then asked the sons to break each stick into pieces. The sons broke the sticks within minutes, then proceeded to quarrel among themselves again. The old man said, My dear sons, the game is not yet over. I will now give you another bundle of sticks. Only this time, you will have to break them together as a bundle, not separately. The sons readily agreed and then tried to break the bundle. Despite trying their best, they could not break the sticks. The sons told their father of their failure. The old man said, My dear sons, see. Breaking every single stick individually was easy for you, but breaking them in a bundle, you could not do. By staying united, nobody can harm you. If you continue to quarrel, then anyone can quickly defeat you. The old man continued, I ask that you stay united. Then, the three sons understood there's power in unity, and promised their father they would all stay together. The moral of the story. There's strength in unity. The next one is, the three fish. Once upon a time, there lived three big fish in a lake. They were close friends, but characteristically very different. The first one was very wise. He always did everything after careful thought. The second one was very cheerful, intelligent and resourceful. He would always use his brains to find a solution for any problem. The third one believed in fate. He believed that whatever was to happen would happen and nobody could change it. One day while playing in the water near the shore, 
The wise fish overheard a fisherman telling another fisherman, this lake is full of good fish. Let us come back here tomorrow for fishing. Hearing this the fish rushed to his friends and told them all he had overheard. Let us leave this lake through this canal and go to another lake, he said. The resourceful fish said, I will not leave the lake. When the fishermen come, I will find a way to save myself. The third fish said, I have lived in this lake all my life and will not leave it. Whatever will be, will be. The wise one did not want to take risks and left for the other lake. The next morning the fishermen came and cast their net. The two friends were caught in the net. The resourceful fish thought of a way out. He lay still and pretended to be dead. The fisherman threw him out into the water. The fish who believed in fate kept flipping around in the net. One of the fishermen struck him dead. Moral of the story. One who does not adapt to change often perishes. The next one. The fox and the grapes. One day, a fox became very hungry as he went to search for some food. He searched high and low, but couldn't find something that he could eat. Finally, as his stomach rumbled, he stumbled upon a farmer's wall. At the top of the wall, he saw the biggest, juiciest grapes he'd ever seen. They had a rich, purple color, telling the fox they were ready to be eaten. He tried a few more times but kept failing. Finally, the fox decided it was time to give up and go home. While he walked away, he muttered, I'm sure the grapes were sour anyway. Moral of the story, never despise what we can't have, nothing comes easy. Next story, a farmer and his wife. A farmer said to his wife, you are lazy. You work slowly and lethargically. You waste your time. The wife was angry at the words of her husband. She said to her husband, you are wrong. Stay at home tomorrow. I will go to field. I will do your work there. Will you do my works at home here? The farmer said happily, very well. I will do your works back at home. The wife said, milk the cow. Feed the pigs. Wash the utensils. Take care of our hen. Spin the yarn. The woman went to the field. The farmer stayed back at home. He took a vessel and went to the cow to milk it. He tried to milk the cow. He received a good kick. He then went to the pigsty. He hit his head against the beam. He went to feed the hen. He forgot to spin. The wife returned from the field when it turned evening. The farmer hung down his head in shame. Thereafter he did not find fault with his wife. They lived happily together for a long time. The next story, the weight of the glass. Once upon a time, a psychology professor walked around on a stage while teaching stress management principles to an auditorium filled with students. As she raised a glass of water, everyone expected they'd be asked the typical, glass half empty or glass half full, question. Instead, with a smile on her face, the professor asked, how heavy is this glass of water I'm holding? Students shouted out answers ranging from 8 ounces to a couple of pounds. She replied, from my perspective, the absolute weight of this glass doesn't matter. It all depends on how long I hold it. If I hold it for a minute or two, it's fairly light. If I hold it for an hour straight, its weight might make my arm ache a little. If I hold it for a day straight, my arm will likely cramp up and feel completely numb and paralyzed, forcing me to drop the glass to the floor. In each case, the weight of the glass doesn't change, but the longer I hold it, the heavier it feels to me. As the class shook their heads in agreement, she continued, your stresses and worries in life are very much like this glass of water. Think about them for a while and nothing happens. Think about them a bit longer and you begin to ache a little. Think about them all day long, and you will feel completely numb and paralyzed, incapable of doing anything else until you drop them. The moral of the story, on days when you're stressed out and feeling overwhelmed, learn to embrace the inevitable and let go. Some things cannot be controlled and no amount of worrying could put all your burdens away. Instead of letting stress get to you, embrace it and conquer it. Let yesterday's worries inspire you to a productive day. Next story, the talkative turtle. A talkative turtle called Tom lived in a lake deep inside a forest. He would talk all day long with anyone from tiny ants to giant elephants. But Tom liked to talk most with his best friends a pair of geese called Bo and Mo. The three friends lived in the same lake. One day, they noticed that the water in the lake was drying up. It hadn't rained all year. Many animals in the forest were leaving the forest in search of water. Bo and Mo decided to leave too. With a heavy heart, they came to say goodbye to Tom. But why are you saying goodbye? 
asked Tom, without water, there soon won't be any fish in the lake. I too want to leave. We would love to take you along, Bo said sadly. But you cannot fly. How will you come with us? Oh, that's not a problem. We just have to find a sturdy log of wood. You hold the log with your beaks and fly. I will hold on to the wood with my mouth. That way we can all leave together, Tom said. Mo looked worried, that's a nice plan. But Tom you love to talk. When we're up in the air you can't open your mouth. Tom laughed, I can keep quiet when it's important. Let's go guys, it'll be an adventure. The three friends left the next morning. Tom was excited, he had lived all his life on the ground. Now he could see mountains from a height. Even the tall elephants looked tiny from the sky. He wanted to discuss all this with his friends. But remembering Mo's words, he kept his mouth shut. The three soon passed over a village. The villagers had seen geese fly before. But never had they seen geese flying with a log of wood between their beaks. What is that? The villagers shouted, is that a ball they are carrying? Asked one villager. No, no, it's a bundle of clothes, shouted another. Hey, what will geese do with clothes? Laughed another. Tom was confused. What are these villagers blabbering? He wanted to ask. But the moment he opened his mouth, he dropped straight to the ground. He hit his head on a rock and fell unconscious. When Tom opened his eyes, he saw Bo and Mo standing over him. Seeing Tom's confusion, Bo spoke, you fell when you opened your mouth even though we had asked you to keep it shut. The villagers were kind. They took care of you and then left you near a lake, said Mo. Tom looked around. They were at a beautiful lake. I think this is a nice place to call home, isn't it? The geese asked Tom. But Tom had learned his lesson. He simply nodded without opening his mouth. Next story. The Three Promises. Young man named Aditya was walking through a forest. He came across a well. Aditya was thirsty and wanted to drink some water. But he was shocked to see a tiger, a snake and a man trapped inside the well, which was dry. All three pleaded with Aditya to pull them up. Aditya was scared. What if the tiger eats me? What if the snake bites me? He thought. But the tiger assured him that he wouldn't harm Aditya if he rescued him. The snake hissed in agreement. Aditya threw a long rope inside the well to help the three out. The tiger came out first. Thank you for helping me friend. If you are ever in this forest again, come visit me at my home. I promise to repay you for your help, the tiger said. The snake was the next to come out. You are a brave young man. I promise that I will be there whenever you need my help. All you need to do is take my name, the snake said. Finally, it was the turn of the human. Thank you, thank you, good sir. I work as a goldsmith in the capital city. I promise to be your friend forever. Please visit me if you ever come to the city. Happy to have made new friends, Aditya resumed his journey. A few years later, he was passing by the same forest. Aditya remembered the tiger's promise. He made his way to the cave where the tiger lived. The tiger greeted him warmly. He gave him fresh fruits from the forest and water to drink. When Aditya was about to leave, the tiger gave him gold ornaments covered with precious gems. Here's a small gift my friend. I hope you like it. Aditya was grateful for the gift, but he didn't know what to do with the ornaments. Then he remembered his friend, the goldsmith. The goldsmith would be able to melt the ornaments and give Aditya gold coins. The goldsmith greeted Aditya warmly. He offered him cool lemonade and asked him about the journey. Aditya told him about his visit to the tiger and its gifts. He asked the goldsmith to help him by melting the ornaments and giving him gold coins. The goldsmith was shocked when he saw the ornaments. The goldsmith had made them with his own hands for the king's younger brother. The same younger brother who had gone missing in the forest a few months ago. The king had announced a reward for anyone who could provide information about the prince. But the goldsmith hid his shock. If I tell the king that this young man has killed the prince, he will definitely give me the reward, he thought. The goldsmith asked Aditya to rest for some time and made his way to the palace. The goldsmith said that he had found the man who had killed the king's younger brother. The king dispatched soldiers to the goldsmith's house to arrest Aditya. The king refused to hear Aditya's side of the story and threw him in jail. The next story, Weaver goes to war. Princess Srimadi's father, the king of Vishalanagar, was sitting in the royal court. The neighboring king had sent a messenger, demanding a tribute. If the king did not pay the tribute, it would mean war. The king was a worried. The neighboring king was very powerful. 
The armies of Vishalnagar would be no match for them. Just then, a soldier rushed into court. Bowing to the king, he said, My lord, sorry for the intrusion. But this is an urgent matter. Can we speak in private? This soldier was in charge of Princess Srimati's security. The king immediately agreed. When the two were alone, the soldier spoke, My lord, I have troubling news. It has come to my attention that a stranger visits Princess Srimati's room every night. But how does this man enter her room? Don't we have soldiers at every door? The king asked angrily. We do, but this man flies in on a bird. The king was shocked. Let's catch him tonight. As soon as this man flies in on this bird, we will enter the room and nab him. That night, the weaver entered Srimati's room as usual. As soon as he stepped in, the king and queen, followed by the soldiers, rushed in. Srimati and the weaver shivered with fright. Who is this man Srimati? The king thundered. Slowly, the princess told her parents everything, including how she had ended up marrying Lord Vishnu. When the king and queen heard that their son-in-law was none other than Lord Vishnu, they fell at his feet. The weaver felt awkward, but he no choice but to pretend that he was Lord Vishnu. The next day the king summoned the neighboring king's messenger. Tell your king that Vishalnagar will not pay him any tribute. He can come with an army if he wants. Everyone in the court was shocked. The queen turned to the king, can our army win this battle? The king smiled and spoke loudly for everyone to hear. We can defeat all our enemies when Lord Vishnu himself is our son-in-law. Soon, the neighboring king arrived at Vishalnagar's gates eager to fight. He did not believe that Lord Vishnu was on earth. Soon he would crush Vishalnagar's army. Within the city gates, the king and queen were dressing the weaver for battle. The weaver felt trapped. His friend, the carpenter, came to visit him. A weaver can fight no battles. It is better that you fly away on the bird with Princess Srimati, the carpenter said. No, my friend, I would die of shame. If I go to the battlefield, at least I can die a hero, the weaver replied. Meanwhile, the real Garuda flew to Lord Vishnu's home in Vakantha. He told him about the weaver who was pretending to be Lord Vishnu and how he was riding to battle on a fake bird. My lord, if this weaver is killed, everyone will think that the king has defeated Lord Vishnu himself. We cannot let that happen. Lord Vishnu laughed. So, you're worried we look weak. Don't worry my friend, everything will be alright. The next morning, dressed in armor, the weaver climbed onto the mechanical bird. No one in Vishalnagar was worried. Everyone felt that the battle was as good as won. The weaver flew over the city walls towards the army. He closed his eyes and started praying to Lord Vishnu keep the people of Vishalnagar safe. He prayed that the neighboring king would be sensible. He prayed for strength in the battle. As soon as he opened his eyes, the weaver was filled with a strange strength. The wind was in his hair. He had nothing to lose. He let out a huge roar. Hearing the roar, the opposing army got scared. But they were scared of their king even more. They stood grimly as the bird came near. The weaver wanted to fly over the army far away from their arrows and swords. Suddenly the bird jerked. Something was wrong. A gear was stuck. The wings were no longer flapping. The bird was crashing, and it was heading straight for the opposing armies. The soldiers panicked watching the mechanical Garuda come straight at them. They started running helter-skelter as the mechanical Garuda crashed to the ground. Dust was flying everywhere when the weaver got up from the ground. When the dust settled, the army was nowhere to be seen. The weaver walked back to city and was given a hero's welcome. He touched the king's feet and confessed everything. The king was shocked to learn the weaver's true identity. But he was grateful to him for driving away the enemy. He blessed the weaver and his daughter and the two were married once again with great pomp.